Honorable Samuel Eiba, an APC chieftain, former commissioner of local government affairs, under right on the road to Michibike Amechi, is my guest on today's show. Welcome to Expression House. Let's talk more about um, your party, which is the All Progressive Congress APC. Um, recently, the cultural zealot Aguma Suits slams um, fire against him with this judgment by Chief Justice Omeriji. How should the APC forge progressively ahead at this time? Well, uh, in any political uh, setting, litigations of this nature, especially as it regards to APC, is not a very good development for our political you know, experience. But we thank God that the Honorable Justice has deemed it necessary to throw out that contemptuous uh, suit against Honorable Senator, rather Senator Andrew Uchendo and Secretary Horton Davis. It's very gladdening because those are all the cogs in the wheel that affects the development of APC in the state. Now that that is over, we know that there are still other matters that are still outstanding that has to do with the Agoma suit, especially the one at the Abbey Court and the Supreme Court. For me, those matters, especially the one at the Supreme Court, is frivolous in the sense that it's just a simple motion or the filing processes in the matter, it was still at the appellate court, at the court of appeal. So I'm sure the justices will do justice to that. We don't have that in our mind. So that the soft ending mother could be trashed out. So at the end of the day, APC will be one family. Although we still see it as no Victor Novan, which as Obona Woke, the spokesperson of the parties for now has made it very clear in his address. So we look forward to a better future for APC in the state. Despite the challenges that um, the All Progressive Congress has um, gone through, is there a possibility that they can stand back? Definitely. The capacity to fight back has never been lacking in us. It's just those uh, little distractions we have from people who, you know, in quote, that call themselves members of the party. I don't think they are, you know, to some, to some extent. The reason is that if you have issues within your party, you must exhaust the pacifist means that the constitution of the party has provided. Until you do that, your loyalty to the party will still be very questionable. Okay, now talking about the stakeholders um, guiding the party, now how do you think um, they should always seek to resolve internal issues? There have always been, you know, opportunities to resolve issues. It's just that there are persons who are not team players. There's nothing that is happening within a party that is new. Everybody knew how they got power and how they came by opportunities that came their way. And in any association where you don't have leaders, things will always go wrong. And I think in River State, right Honorable Chibike Rotimi Amechi is our leader. He directs, we follow. There's no two ways about that because everybody has benefited from his you know, kind-heartedness, politically or otherwise. So I see no reason why anybody would think that you know, a party that is still in its early stage, especially in the state, should have this kind of crisis. A leader should be given the opportunity to direct the party accordingly. And I'm sure at the end of the day, everybody will be happy. But what we have today is not what we expect because of these distractions. And I hope that we'll learn from our experience and build a better, stronger, united party. The recent issue now in NDDC, the Niger Delta Development Commission, um, the House of Representatives has summoned all seven and former heads of the Niger Delta Development Commission, that is NDDC, as part of the ongoing probe of financial mismanagement in the agency. What's your take on this? Well, I think that the Niger Delta Development Commission is an interventionist agency that has come to solve myriads of problems within the Niger Delta states. Unfortunately, they've not been able to live up to their belly, if you ask me. So I would think that whoever that has a question to answer should be called upon so that through that process, we'll be able to find a better way of handling the affairs of Niger Delta. It is not the patrimony of any individual or persons. Since the establishment of the commission, a lot has happened. And most of us who are all Niger Delta, we, we are not privy to all that has happened because you know, we are not in the commission. But through this kind of findings, what we call a forensic audit, yeah. we'll be able to at least look at what is happening and see how to do things differently, including the staff audits. 
because it's not all, always about project because you need to have the right persons in the right places with the right mindset so to be able to deliver yeah. projects it will just look as if it's just all there for everybody to grab no because we must do things that will sustain development we must do things that posterity will be proud of us because one day we'll leave the scene and whatever we'll leave behind will be our story for me, I want to leave behind a good story, and I will be glad if a good story is left behind in Niger Delta. Politically, how should um, polit um, political stability be enhanced um, for effective purposes? Politics is a group game, and the people are the people that you know carry out the decisions within the structure of the party. I think that politics is a means to an end. And it is not entirely a bad thing as people would want us to believe. So I think that politics should be seen as a vehicle to a purposeful end. We are people who have the right idea. It's not an all-commerce affair, especially when it comes to contestable positions. It should be people with the right mindset and the right training and capacity and skill to be able to deliver on promises. Because for the want of better way of putting it, I think the deficit of opportunities in terms of other areas of our economy, politics becomes or comes in handy for people who would have probably had some other choice to delve into politics. If the right persons who are determined from the beginning to get into politics are allowed to do that, I'm sure we'll not have all these challenges. It's just that people don't have other ways of expressing themselves by way of employment and gainful activity is the reason why we're having the kind of state of flux we have in politics. So I think that politics is good when the right persons practice it. Like in other climbs, you must be trained, you must have the skill, you must have the capacity, you must have the, the integrity, you must have the, the name for people to you know, trust you, to be able to sit on their destiny. At the end of the day, when you do that, when you have this caliber of presence, I'm sure the results will be very positive. So I think in our plan, it's not too late to start from that angle. Just like when Amechi was the governor of the state, we saw a lot of landmark developments. We saw a lot of people who do business, who are not necessarily reversed, but because they have contributed to the economy of the state, they also share from the benefits of his governance. So I think that is what politics should be. That is what governance should be. It is not somebody who sits somewhere and thinks for the people. Instead of a thumped up approach, it's otherwise. You can't force people, you can't force your ideas on people. It should emanate from the people. Adap Amechi is a testimony to all that fact. That's a good one, Honorable Samwe Ayifa. Thank you so much for appearing on my show today. I'm most grateful, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us on today's show. God bless you. Bye for now.